What's up? It's your pal Dave from notesandbolts.com and I finally finished the enclosure for the looper controller. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I did it. Welcome to part two of the Looper Project, a custom controller for Tractor DJ software. In part one, I showed you the schematics and code and everything you need to build your own version of this controller. But if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to finish up each project with a professional looking custom enclosure. So let's take a closer look. So this is what I came up with. I used a Hammond 5090 BB box for the enclosure and milled out all the cutouts on my milling machine. For the front label, I used a laminated printout and stuck it down with some double-sided adhesive. Inside, I designed a custom circuit board for the electronics and connected the buttons with some hookup wire. So overall, a pretty simple build. So here's the circuit board I came up with and you notice it's a little strange shape because I had to make everything fit around all these controls and there's not a lot of room inside the case. The USB jack, the potentiometer and the Teensy all connect to the board while all the other controls are wired from off board. So as always, I had my boards made at JLC PCB who are nice enough to sponsor this video. JLC PCB has become my go-to circuit board supplier, not only for their high quality boards and fast shipping, but for their incredible five boards for $2 prototyping deal. And now JLC PCB also provides a surface mount technology assembly service. Choose from over 30,000 components and get your board professionally manufactured with a quick turnaround and great price. So for all your circuit board needs, large and small, make sure you visit jlcpcb.com. So the first part of any project is the design. And I like to use Autodesk Fusion 360 for all my design work. I start off by getting an accurate model of the enclosure I want to use. And I buy my Hammond enclosures from Mouser Electronics and they usually have the 3D models available for download on their website. So that's great. So I just downloaded the 1590 BB model and I can see how everything's gonna fit before I even drill a single hole. The next step is I choose which buttons I'm gonna use and I make some crude 3D models. So these are dimensionally accurate, but they're not nothing fancy. I just need to know how they're going to look and how much room they're going to take up. I also did a model of the potentiometer I was going to use, and there it is. Once again, pretty crude model. Finally, I did a model of the quarter inch jack. So this is uh, where all the controls will be, and I'll bring the enclosure back up. And now I can get a sense of how much room I'm going to have in the enclosure for the circuit board. So I'll design a shape for the circuit board around all the components. So you can see how I made it fit. It fits between the buttons. There's a little cutout here for the uh, quarter inch jack. And I have this little piece that extends the USB connector out of the back of the case. Now on the circuit board, you can see that the USB jack and the potentiometer are mounted directly to the board and all the other buttons and jacks are panel mount and will be wired to the board with some hookup wire. And finally, I modeled one standoff just so I could accurately position the circuit board in the enclosure. So there's the whole thing, basically showing me exactly how everything's going to fit. So once that's done, I can take the dimensions directly from Fusion 360 and make a diagram that's going to show me all the dimensions I need when I'm actually using the milling machine to cut the holes. I know this looks pretty busy, but 
I use a manual milling machine, so I like to have a lot of dimensions, so no matter where I am, I can kind of reference things to another measurement somewhere. All right, so the next step is to take the shape I came up with in Fusion for my circuit board and start making that in KiCad. And then I can see the board in 3D and actually see how everything's going to look with all the silk screen graphics and the whole bit. When I'm done that, I like to export the 3D model of the board out of KiCad and re-import it into Fusion 360 and then I can get the exact board dimensions and make sure what I designed in KiCad is actually going to still fit in my 3D model. So once the design is finished, it's time for the creative part. And this is actually one of my favorite parts. I now open up a new project in Inkscape and draw a shape that is the same size as the label I want. I then mark out where all the holes will be for the potentiometers and buttons and the screw holes for the standoffs. And then I start designing my graphics around those. So we could start with some text, that's my basic labels, and then we can add some uh, graphics. So I came up with a circular kind of theme because it reminded me of uh, the, the uh, turntable decks on the tractor controller, so it's kind of a motif. And finally, we can add our logo to make it look complete. So now that I have all the parts designed, I'm ready to start building. Now I'll take the enclosure over to the milling machine and mill out a square hole for the USB port and use a drill bit to drill out a hole for the quarter inch foot switch jack. Now with the enclosure clamped flat on the table I could drill out the holes for the buttons. Now you may notice I have a paper template attached to the top of the enclosure. I'm not actually using this for position. I'm just using it to get a general sense of where things can go, but I'm using the dials on the milling machine to get exact measurements. Next, I'll drill out the holes for the circuit board standoffs. And one more hole for the potentiometer. And there's the finished enclosure. Now I'll print out the graphics I designed earlier on some matte photo paper. The next step is to place the graphics on the adhesive carrier sheet for my Silhouette Cameo cutting machine. Now we just load it up and let the machine do its work. Okay, let's carefully remove the label and see what we got. To make the label durable, I'm going to laminate it using a standard office laminator. Next, I'm going to make the label sticky using some 3M 467MP double adhesive. Now, I'll use a paper cutter to carefully trim the label down to size making sure I leave just a tiny bit of lamination around the edge so the label won't come apart later. Now for the fun part, sticking the label to the enclosure. I'm using some blue tape to make a hinge to hold the label in place while I peel off the back. This stuff is really sticky so you have to make sure everything's aligned when you put it down. You only get one shot.
The final step is to trim out the holes using an X-Acto knife. And after all that, here is the finished enclosure. Now that the enclosure is finished, we can start building the actual circuit. The first step is to take our Teensy LC and solder two wires to the D plus and D minus pads. This will break out the USB connector. Now I'll cut some breakaway headers to the correct size so I could solder the Teensy to the circuit board. Now I'll strip the two wires coming from the D plus and D minus pads on our Teensy and solder them to the board. Here's what it looks like when all the pins are soldered in place. Now it's time to solder the USB jack. And here's the board with the big USB jack connected to the TNT. Now we'll solder the resistor to the board. This will limit the current to the LED in the record button and stop it from blowing up. The last component to go on the board is the potentiometer. Now we'll cut and strip two pieces of wire for each button and then solder them in place. We'll cut an extra two pieces for the LED on the record button. After that's done, we'll install the buttons and this is what it will look like when you turn it over. And now we're ready to do the final assembly. Notice I've attached standoffs to the circuit board with some three millimeter screws. Now I'll take the wires from the buttons and attach them to the corresponding pads on the circuit board. I made sure I left the wires long enough so I could actually pull the circuit board out and feed the wires in place. This part is a little fiddly, but if you take your time, it's not too bad. The last thing I need to do is solder two wires to the quarter inch foot switch jack and install it in place. Now I'll secure the circuit board to the enclosure with some nice black anodized screws. Now it's time to put the back on the enclosure and seal it up. To keep the unit from sliding around on your desk, we're gonna put on some stick-on rubber feet. And to top it all off, we'll install a potentiometer knob. And there it is, all finished and ready to go. Alright guys, so there it is. The Looper project is complete. I hope by watching me go through all the steps it takes to design something like this, it will inspire you to take your projects to the next level. I'd once again like to sincerely thank all my patrons on Patreon for helping to make these videos possible. So that's it for now. I'll be back very soon with a new project.